Max Verstappen looks set to win a fourth consecutive F1 driver's title this season with Red Bull, but question marks over his future linger. Multiple sources are claiming Max Verstappen and Mercedes are due to meet over the Miami Grand Prix to discuss a potential future together, with it being mooted a 150 million euros per year contract could be offered to secure the Dutchman's services. The report added, the publication further claimed that Verstappen's Mercedes salary would also include post-racing ambassador duties. Considering Verstappen's deal to Mercedes is done, can Max continue to achieve what he is achieving now at Red Bull? Or will face Mercedes' car obstacle? Since Lewis Hamilton announced his decision to leave Mercedes for Ferrari ahead of the 2025 season, all eyes have been on who the Silver Arrows would bring in as the British replacement. The likes of Carlos Sainz, Kimi Antonelli, Oscar Piastri and Fernando Alonso have all been linked with the soon-to-be vacant seat. And now all eyes go to Max Verstappen. Verstappen's departure from Red Bull is also being seen likely as design guru Adrian Newey looks set to leave the team. According to a recent report, the final straw for Verstappen could be Red Bull Motorsport director Helmut Mark being poached by Mercedes, as the German motorsport team goes for the kill. Verstappen has stated on multiple occasions that if Marco leaves the team, he might ponder his future with Red Bull. Meanwhile, Wolf has made it clear on multiple occasions that he would love to sign Verstappen if he decides to leave Red Bull. Toto said we have a slot free, the only one in the top teams, unless Max decides he goes then the slot is not going to be free with us anymore. There are a few options that are really interesting for us, from the very young super talent to some of the older ones who are very experienced. However, one surprising name that popped up was current F1 champion Verstappen, whose future with Red Bull is in doubt, with chief designer Adrian Newey reportedly wanting to depart the team. Ahead of the Miami Grand Prix, it has been reported that Verstappen's management team are set to meet with Mercedes after the race weekend, Reported by The Sun, Verstappen's father, Joes, and his manager Raymond Vermeulen are going to hold talks with the three owners of the Brackley-based team, in the shapes of Toto Wolff, Mercedes-Benz CEO Ola Kalinius, and Ineos boss Sergeum Ratcliffe. Speaking during the Rally de Wallonie, Joes spoke about his sin's future. He said, I think everyone wants him, only I think Max is right for the moment. He has a fast car, but we also have to look further to 2026. So we are letting everything come to us at the moment. We stay very calm and see what will happen. Is Mercedes car the problem or the driver performance? Toto Wolff, the Mercedes team boss, has been open about his pursuit of Verstappen for F1 2025, admitting last month that he would love to sign him. However, he conceded that addressing Mercedes woes with a W15 car is the team's priority, with Verstappen likely to be swayed by results, Wolff said, I'd love to have him, but first we need to sort out our car. Mercedes has only been fifth fastest on single lap pace in 2024, so far, and still has a sizable deficit to Red Bull. That in itself isn't the big concern because Mercedes always knew it would be off the pace of Red Bull at the start of the year, but the key objective was to have a car that worked consistently and performed in line with what the team expected. In Bahrain, that seemed to be the case despite cooling problems that compromised Lewis Hamilton and George Russell's race pace. But in Saudi Arabia, some very familiar complaints emerged. Hamilton was surprised and likely bitterly disappointed to discover during practice that, just like last year, he was lacking a little confidence in the rear of the car. The problem persisted throughout the Jeddah weekend, with Hamilton even experimenting with a higher down fuss rear wing in FP3 to try and solve the problem. Toto said there's a bigger factor with a lack of pace in the high-speed corners than just the rear wing, we are missing down first beyond the steps we would have with a bigger rear wing. We tried it on Lewis, some tests which we don't understand. We are quick everywhere else, pretty much. To get the performance out of these ground effect cars at a smooth high grip track like Jeddah, you need to run the car low and stiff. And this is where Mercedes is, yet again, hitting trouble. A glance at the performance of the cars through the high speed sweeps of turns 6 to 10 at Jeddah highlights the difficulty. When the race asked Russell after qualifying how concerned he was that there might not be such a sweet spot for the car, he said we're learning about the car and we just need to find a better compromise here. We're chasing the downfuss, but perhaps the downfuss isn't worth the losses that the bouncing brings. We've shown really strong pace at points. We went out in FP1 yesterday and we were quickest on the hard tire straight from the get-go. And then it seemingly got slower. 
that me Mercedes is the engineers cannot find the issue of the W15 after two bad designs. The first races confirmed that drivers and engineers are dealing with a car that is still difficult and uncooperative. Mercedes W15 works intermittently, and when it does, it's not entirely clear why. This indicates that Mercedes will continue to try and experiment to find a solution. And this does not work in its favor of Max Verstappen, if the deal is complete. McLaren team principal Andrea Stella was surprised after he first saw Red Bull's RB20. He dove deep into how the reigning world champions developed their 2024 F1 Challenger. As quoted by the race, Stella stated that he was wowed by the RB20. He said that the massive advantage in 2024 gave Red Bull some leeway to take risks and test a slightly different development path. He said I have to say when I saw the car, I was like wow, they certainly were brave in changing some of the shapes that made that car that was so successful last year. They could enjoy such an advantage last year that gave them the confidence from a timeline point of view to take some risks early on to actually see whether it works. I think it's a bit of an open door really, Mercedes was the fastest car out of testing on both medium and hard tires, RBR put in the fastest single lap on the soft, a tire which wasn't. Tudes over the first few races. It wasn't until after Spain, when RBR decided to compromise some grip for higher top speeds on the straights that got them into the game. Over the last four races, the Mercedes engines were tuned up and they were completely out of reach. When you look at the races in between, it was often very close. Verstappen, however, maximized the car's true potential much better and did benefit from Hamilton's mistakes more often. The RB has been comfortably fastest on the grid 2022, significantly so in 2023 and seemingly significantly so in 2024. Max has a team around him, car tailored for him nothing wrong with that, it's clearly a winning strategy. Max is terrific, but he's still human. If another team can build a car as quick as that RB, then he will be challenged, no doubt. Remember both Vettel and Ricciardo have been flattered by an Adrian Newey car, and then looked very normal when racing for other teams, Max is better than both. And the reality is 2021 was one of the most evenly matched years we've seen. The RB and Mercedes were extremely closely matched over the year, couldn't put a piece of paper between them. Both Max and Lewis were on the absolute limit all year. Lewis particularly impressed by winning something like three of the first four races, when the RB was objectively quicker, and Lewis often starts the season slow. Max impressed in the last set of races by keeping the title alive, when the Mercedes had the advantage by way of sticking a fresh engine in. There's a lot keenness to build the myth of either driver, by saying your favorite one had the worst car but still was faster than the other, but it's nonsense. Both drivers, both cars were an even match for each other, at a very similar level, which is where the season went right down to the last lap of the last race, such a shame the season was decided by the race director changing the rules on the spot, if that last race had been a fair fight, either Lewis or Max would have been were the champions that year. There's a very similar pattern from Schumacher to Vettel to Lewis to Max. These periods of dominance are part of modern F1. All four of those drivers are were tough, uncompromising, ruthless competitors, otherwise they wouldn't have gotten to where they did.